Hey guys, I want you to meet the amazing one and only Kimberly Marie. So she is a hairstylist and a business coach, and she's one who's volunteered to work with her class so that they can get a taste of a real world Power BI projects. And uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a win win. I mean, she gets to she's I'm sure she's gonna end up with a pretty amazing set of Power BI reports based on her financial data. And of course, the class is going to get real world Power BI experience. So, hey, just uh, forewarned, I'm going to be probably pretty chatty as we run this project. I'm going to try to post actually quite a few updates. Hope that's okay with you guys. So, yeah, I just had a quick meeting with Kimberly. Now, she is actually in Hawaii, but she is she was nice enough to talk to me. And uh, she will still be in Hawaii tomorrow when we kick off the real power bi project so tomorrow at 10 a.m pacific on our q a call if you're inside the learn power bi program join us there and and yeah it's gonna be as if she's our client and we're a consulting company learn and we're all gonna help her now i'm not really sure how many students do we have signed up for this uh if if there are a few frankly even if there's only one we'll, we'll we can run the project that would be great if there are more than that, if they're like, I don't know, like 10 or something, then we might even do groups of them and we may make teams out of that. So, and again, it's a beta, so we don't really know how it's gonna go, but I'm, I'm happy to try. So I'll uh, catch you up a little bit on uh, my meeting with Kimberly. First of all, she was a great sport. I told her that um, it's a beta and uh, I have no idea how it's gonna go. And she was like, yeah, cool, you know. So again, she's a business coach as well. So she knows that aspect of business, the MVP, the minimum viable product, doing beta and all that stuff. So that's uh, uh, that's that's good. So I took a glance at her data. And the, uh, the thing is, I was a little bit concerned. I was a little bit concerned because for one, uh, you, for the first project, it has to be that Goldilocks right. You know, not, not too hard, not too simple. So I was afraid, and there are things in Power BI where you touch it with that Power BI magic wand and you're done in an hour. B believe me, right? I mean, a lot of times people come to me and they, they kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one consulting and they buy like 10 hours or, or something like that. And and I'm we're done in an hour, like, uh, okay. Or done in the first 15 minutes of the hour. So I was concerned about that, but that didn't happen. That didn't happen. So it's not, uh, yeah, I mean, hairstylist, business coach, but she's definitely got data. So this feels like the right size. It obviously it doesn't, it's not too complex either. I would have probably felt a little jittery if it felt too complex. So relatively straightforward, but not simple by any means. And that's what I'm saying, guys. I mean, real business is always messy. In the bigger context of things, I mean, this is this is small potatoes, but I, you know, this is gonna take some time. This is gonna take some love. This is gonna take some work, some iterations. And I've always talked about like Power BI, it's like peeling an onion, right? It's not the old school, oh yeah, six months or year long BI project. Let's collect our requirements. Yeah, let's take a month to write down every single requirement. What BS is that? Can we stop doing that? Yeah, my rule by the way at Microsoft was uh, the day I, I am required to write a requirements document, I'll quit my job. Okay, <laughs> you, you can see I'm pretty passionate about these things. Those things just don't work. Why do we keep doing stuff that doesn't work? Okay, I'm talking about the from the business side of you. IT guys, if you're freaking out on that, don't worry, I get it. Yeah, okay. All right, back to this. So just give you a preview. So what the file she shared, and it's all dummy data, but uh, she, uh, you know, so she's tracking kind of her actuals. That's what I would call it. And sometimes I'm careful about the terms that I use with clients versus what I use internally. Sometimes I do coach them, I just tell them, oh, I would call this actual, and it's confirm with them. I did confirm with her that, hey, everything that's in here, it actually happened. That's what's being recorded, right? It's not projections or anything like that, assumptions, and she said, yeah, so this is actuals, uh, and we have uh, just one year of data, so that's one thing that I'm gonna ask her tomorrow. It's like, what about multiple years? Like, how do, do we do different files for that? And that's okay. And of course, one thing that I saw right away, I didn't comment to her. And again, that's one thing you have to kind of measure. You have to walk with them at their own pace. You can't rush them. I mean, there are things that I look at data and I see, boom, you know, like, oh man, I can see like, you know, when we're done with this project, we're, where we're gonna be. But you have to slow yourself down. And because if the client 
whoever, it could be external client, could be internal client, whoever your customer is, if they can't keep up, keep pace with you, it, it's it's useless. I mean, I, I think I've, I've had this happen to me, so I learned this the hard way, where I built something for the client and they didn't use it because it was in a way too futuristic. And of course, you would never find somebody say that, but if they're not using it, even if you think it's awesome, then you know, you missed the boat somewhere. So yeah, so I didn't say it to her, but I saw something right away that the classic dilemma, the classic dilemma of where the data lives and the reporting is like, you know, smushed together. Smushed together because in Excel, in the old world, there, there's no delineation. You, you, you're not really able to pull it apart. And I feel that's important. That I feel that's really important. You get a lot of, uh, uh, you know, kind of strength and agility out of that. It's, it's really amazing where you separate the data. So maybe that's one thing we'll work on. Uh, as uh, and, and she's totally flexible. So uh, this is kind of the actuals, and then she has the other table where she does her forecasting, and this is the classic challenge, that how do you keep the actuals flowing in without having to manually just enter everything, and, and but at the same time have some projection for the future. Now this is gonna be a really interesting challenge. I didn't get too deep with her, but I think the key is gonna be that I think the model that she has right now uh, does some kind of averaging. I'm, I'm still trying to understand this, uh, but of course, if I didn't have that, like how do you project? So there are two ways that I can think of, which would be pretty straightforward. One is based on last year. So say, hey, you know what? We, yeah, let's do it based on last year. And we can add like a percentage growth if you want. Like, okay, we, we're gonna take last year numbers, assume 5% growth. Or if we have like enough data for this year, maybe we can project it out. Now that, the key question that I hope I remember to ask Kimberly is that, is the business cyclical or not? I mean, do you get a lot of kind of hairstyling business in, in December? I don't know when people are getting ready for Christmas parties, Thanksgiving, something like that, right? So if it's cyclical, that you cannot, should not project it out. I'm like, oh, I have my first six months, the next six months I'm gonna be at the same pace or something like that. No, so if it's cyclical, then you're better off using last year. So. Uh, so again, I mean, you, you see how this is going, guys. I mean, this is this is not simple by any means, but but I think this is a good size. So I'm pretty excited about this. And again, we're gonna go kind of peel this onion. We're gonna go step by step, small step by step. Um, and I'm I, I will admit I'm not 100% sure like how much do I uh, lead. I, I actually I don't want to lead. The whole idea is for the students to kind of immerse themselves. So. I don't know, the first time beta, so I may not get it right, but I, I think the uh, the word in my mind is just guide, right? So, in fact, the visual in my mind is, you know how you go to the bowling alley and uh, you have the bumper rails? Uh, I don't know, I mean, you, you probably don't bowl with bumper rails. I sometimes do, because I have kids with me, guys. I'm not, I don't suck at bowling, you know? Yeah, just, just for the kids' sake. Um, so yeah, so my job, I'll try to be the bumper la bumper rails. I'm a little bit concerned that I'll get too excited. As you can get, as you can see, I get excited by this Power BI stuff. That I'll get too excited and kind of start jumping in. Um, maybe we'll have a monitor who who uh, who warn me, who kind of you know slap me on the wrist or something. Um, so guys, yeah, that's it. I'm super excited. It's beta. It's real Power BI for all the new members who just joined the Learn Power BI program. I would love to see you there tomorrow. And whether or not you you uh, you know signed up for this specific project or not, we're gonna have our Q and A call anyway, right? So nine o'clock Pacific time tomorrow, we meet. You get to ask all the Power BI questions that you have, and ten o'clock we'll have Kimberly calling in from Hawaii, and uh, let's uh, let's let's end there. How about that? All right. So tomorrow, you're all gonna be meeting the one and only Kimberly Murray. Power on, my friends.